let's start off with the doodle books because otherwise we get completely. Okay. So this is the most awesome of doodle books. Yeah, those are the little ones that are going. Oh, yeah. This is the Grandview Doodle Books, the Collector Series Doodle Book, Grandview Edition. Oh, yeah. Can you get one? Can you get a Grandview Doodle leather bound? Yes. These are the ones I've talked about. Special, special autographed by me and yes. all this stuff. Um, yeah, you'll have to wash my car. Oh, I have to wash your car? No problem. You'll have to, you'll have to like do shopping for me for a month. Actually, I don't have, we gave this away for the television show. And so there are very few. So is this yours? Ah, you must be a very special friend. Do you have any extras? No, that's it? Because I, th I haven't seen these around for a while. They were a gift that we sent to all the PBS stations. So anyway, so this is your doodle book. Now, you know with the doodle books, we're not supposed to be sharing them or looking at them. Yeah. So, so what kind of insight did you get from the doodle book? Um, I have a great deal of trouble not looking at the page as opposed to focusing on whatever it is I'm doodling. And I tried covering up the page, you know, and, and doodling underneath, and mm -hmm. that was just impossible. I, I just couldn't seem to do that. And my doodles seem to be larger than uh, they should be as far as making three on a page. So. Okay, so what you're doing is you're following my instructions explicitly. And so that's good. That's good, but not good because it's not being creative. So, you know, if I tell you to go and do three to a page and you're doing a little tiny doodle book, that's kind of impossible. I mean, this is a little doodle book yeah, to begin with. Nice this is a little doodle book. So you might get two yeah. on a page, one on a page. So, so, so just because I say that that's kind of the goal, you don't have to do that. You could just put one on a page if you feel like you want to, you know, go through that. Um, covering your doodle book. If you covered, if you covered the page and just um, mm -hmm. drew without looking at it, you know, like with what I asked last time. Mm -hmm. The issue is, is that you're not supposed to look at whether or not your doodle turned out or not. You're supposed to just move on. And so, so you're saying, yeah, you had some problem with that, that's because after you were through you were judging it or judging it in the process. And remember the whole idea of the doodle books is that you're not supposed to be judging what you're doing. Okay, so it's totally brain hand exercises and the outcome is in the future. It has yes. nothing yes. to do with right now. So you can't judge that. That's why you want to go through the doodle books and just when you're through you throw them under the bed. Okay, don't look at them, they'll be out of, out of whack, all that. All what you're trying to do is get the, uh, the brain, eye, and hand coordination together and it's practice. It's like if you, because you play the piano. And so you practice that and when you practice, you, you play scales. And you know, when you play <coughs> scales, sometimes you get them right and sometimes you, you don't. And you do them over and over and over again and a half an hour later, you step off the piano, turn off the light and go on with your day. You don't sit there and mull over the, the scales that didn't work, and you don't pat yourself on the back with the scales that do work, they're just done. Yeah. And so that's the issue with people have with drawing is that they're just not, they're too attached to them. And then they're judging them. And then when they judge them, they bring their past into it. And then they go, I'm not talented anymore, and I should be like, I, I should be so much better, and ah, oh, you know, the conversations are just horrible. Um, so, so anyway, and the thing is, I shouldn't even be looking at these because that was part of that was part of the deal is that you're not supposed to even share them with with me. But I get kind of a perverse pleasure out of looking through these, going, oh my goodness! Actually, these are actually not bad. Now, what happened? You switched hands every five pages, right? Did you find while you switched hands that your brain changed like the way to observe things? Because that's the whole key. The whole key is about, about ch having the brain go through a different phase. Because if you're sitting there copying something and you're looking at it, and you're copying, 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 
and then you switch. What happens is that when you're switching, your eye observation should change. You should all of a sudden, because you're so uncomfortable, your eyes kind of have to overwork or over-engage. And then it should feel like you're, you're kind of... And the thing is, it shouldn't be judging. You're not going to get any good with it by switching hands. It's just part of the practice, okay? So you did good. The thing is, what I'd like to do is fill up this book. Now, you know, in the Power to Create class, we had... Um, and of course, we didn't call them doodles then. We called them sketching. Mm -hmm. And so every week, everybody was responsible to do five homework assignments, plus at least 100 drawings a week. And I and out of that, yeah. But you know, it was amazing. It was amazing out of that class how, when everybody started working on it, how it got to the point that people would get 10, 20, and there were always teachers' pets that would end up doing, five, you know, 100, 200, 500. I remember there was one guy that had, and she had a full-time job, and it was like a night job, and so she'd even go home and and draw her kids in. She had like two, three-year-olds or the three or four-year-old. And she would draw them while they were sleeping, you know, on top of everything. And she would draw. I mean, she was just constantly drawing. She'd come with four or five hundred drawings every week. Mm -hmm. She'd f she'd filled up in the, in a matter of uh, it's a sixteen week course. She filled up a dozen of these books and large drawing books. She was completely dedicated to it. And then afterwards, she disappeared. I don't know. She went into <laughs> hiding. <laughs> Have no idea. She just like she completed the course and off she went. Uh, <laughs> So anyway, so that's good. I'm glad that you did that. We have two sketchbooks here. Who are these? Yours? And both these yours? From one trip? No, no, they're ongoing. Where the these ones are people? They're all people. Where are these where are these? You you sit in what? The piano performance class. Yeah. So, so while they're playing, you're, you're, these are awesome. Well, this is a performance class, so they come up and they perform. Is that once a week? Can we share these? Okay, we won't share them. When I start seeing like, no. They're all, they're really good though. They're really good. Um, I'm going to flip through them real quick just so that everybody, it's, so you can see. Yeah, so they're, they're all like people in the same position, but they're all playing piano, obviously. Why? Well, see, that's why you don't show them because, you know, there are other people that are like really good and then, and then you have these, you know, these, this is what, these are, you know, where you should be at right now. These are, so what were you thinking? Well, I just go from imagination or objects around. Yeah, that's what they Videos, should be. Objects. Have that. from imagination because I've always doodled. Yeah. Not in a sketchbook or and envelopes or papers lying around. Yeah, well that's kind of the, what doodling is, it's usually mindless. Uh, you, yeah, you're, on like, you're on the phone or whatever. Oh, yeah. You know, back in the olden days when you were tied to the wall on the phone, right. you always kind of were like that. But now with cell phones, you have speaker phones, you can do the dishes, yeah. and well, so it's not like that. And the, yeah, watching TV is good, but then you, all you get is like your husband's feet and the news, <laughs> you know, so. No, I do all of the But you don't want to do them out of your imagination. No, no, the, we want intentional <coughs> doodles. Because what we're trying to do is, is coordinate the brain Eye hand coordination, so it's intentional doodles. So, so you do want to do that. And you know, did you switch hands? Yes, sir. The whole idea behind did you try changing your hand on your doodle book at the concert? Mm -hmm. Okay, and you might not have been there for our conversation for that. You might have missed class. But every four or five pages, I want you to try drawing with your left hand instead of your right. You right-handed? Okay, try drawing with your left hand, and do a page or two of those and then go back to your right hand. And the reason for that is, and I learned this from, you know, now I have a horse, so then I'm watching a horse training and I'm listening to, they're doing, uh, you know, how to train horses. And I'm like sitting there going, it's just like teaching students. <laughs> Except students are a little smarter. I don't know, maybe the horses are a little smarter, I'm not quite sure. Uh, I'm not sure which one. But the thing is, the thing is, the thing is what they do is they say, if you constantly 
teach the horse the same thing. Eventually, they mindlessly do it and they won't grow anymore. So you have to switch something. You have to change something. And so then I thought, you know, changing your hand would make a difference in the way that the brain perceives. And so it's a matter of, of just as an exercise, not as an outcome, just trying to see how the, because when you engage another part of the brain, you start observing in a different way. And the whole idea is practice, practice, practice. And you're a piano teacher too, and you probably realize this, that sometimes when students practice, 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 they're no longer looking at the notes or listening to what they're doing. They fall into this automatic key thing, and they can't, and if they, even if they're doing a mistake in their keys, they can't switch their fingering because they've done it so long that way. You do that yourself, yeah. So, so the thing is what you want to do is you always want to have the brain sharp so that it doesn't fall into this automatic hitting A all the time when it should be hitting B. And, you know, and even like when you, if you're practicing, because I used to play concert pianos, after a while that wrong note feels right. You know, and somebody who knows the music says, no, that, that key is wrong. You've got to change that. And it's really hard once the fingers are, have changed. Yeah. So it's the same kind of philosophy so that you have to change it out once in a while. So anyone else got doodle books? Ah, this is yours? I just started. You just started. You playing golf? No, I was sitting at the Hertz. Um, we had to get a rental car and the guy had his golf. These are great. It's kind of scratchy. <laughs> well, that's all they're supposed to be. Remember, don't judge them. Just move on. Just move forward. Practice. Um, always be in that kind of idea that you're, you're trying to grow. But don't push that onto yourself. Because the sheer act of just practicing, you will get better. As long as you don't judge yourself. Because the first thing you do is lose interest in it once you realize you know, that, that they're not to your expectations. And one of the conversations I had with one of my students this week is that she was very disappointed in her work. Consistently. She was very, very cons consistently disappointed. And I said, well, what does that make her, you know, what does that make you feel like you're disappointed in your work all the time? And she goes, well, I get frustrated and I feel like I'm not growing. And I go, well, you've only been painting two years. Why do you feel like you're not growing? And she goes, well, I just, I just feel like, you know, I'm, I should do more. I should, there should be more, you know, like with your doodle book. It's like you look at it, you go, I should be better at this. And I go, you know that feeling of being frustrated as an artist? Get used to it. <laughs> That's for sure. Get used to it. Because the issue with, with, with being an artist is that as you start getting better, you become more discerning. You start looking at things going, I could do better than that. And you start beating yourself up. And I go, you know, two years ago, you came to class and you were happy to be able to mix three colors and get black. And now you're comparing yourself to Rembrandt and you think you should be there. And the thing is, Rembrandt was very disappointed. I mean, this is one reason why artists drink and do drugs <laughs> is to deal with that disappointment in themselves because what they have in their head is always better than what they can produce. Thank God, because the next time they produce it, they're going to strive for that next thing. It's always that. It's always something better. Even your idea is better. And, you know, even if you don't get it, if you don't get it, the striving of getting it is what art is. It's the striving. Yeah? Uh, how long do you work on your doodles so it doesn't become a drawing? <sighs> the difference of a doodle and a drawing? The difference between a doodle and a drawing, I think uh, when you're doodling, it, uh, you, have n you have no concern over it. I think when you start worrying about whether or not you're done with it or whether or not um, you're overdrawing it, you're overdrawing it. I think it really should be almost like, okay, move on, move on, move on, move on. But once you kind of sit and you're analyzing it, then you've, you're overdrawing it. Now you're starting to sketch and draw, which is fine because there are sometimes doodles are the beginning of ingenious things. You know, so you might start doodling and you're like, oh, oh my God. Because remember, I started off when I was in, um, when I was in uh, Mesa Verde and I looked at that, that, those cliff dwellings 
And I was like totally overwhelmed by the possibility of doing that. And then I started doodling that in the restaurant with a margarita. And I'm not sure what was better, the margarita or the doodles. But in the process of doing the doodle, I really got intrigued with it. And it ended up being a little tiny, tiny drawing, you know. And if you're, if you're learning to paint, that's really the foundation. I mean, because remember, painters are nothing more than drawers with paint. So that's kind of the key right there. Um, and so it's, it's, you can take a doodle into a drawing, into a sketch, and into a painting. It can grow like that, and ultimately you want to do that. But a lot of issues with people in doodling is that they're not doing any drawing. And then they come into class and they don't know how to draw, which is the foundation for painting. And you can learn how to draw while you're painting, but you can also experience the wonderful feeling of having sketchbooks and drawings. So it's just practice, okay?